Okay, so let's begin with our regular content. So that's summarized recently. Um, week one, we'll be going over some introduction to ordinary differential equations, that is ODEs. Some example of ODE, right? So as the word says, is an equation. So any equation should have an equal to sign. That's the basic thing, okay? It says an differential equation. So by differentiation, we know dy, dx, dt, dv, da, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. Now there are type of differential equation. One is ordinary, other is a partial differential equation. We are not going into partial um, today. I will introduce it to some other time. Um, it's not a scope of this unit, uh, but what happens in ordinary change in one variable and change in the other? While the partial differential equation, only one of them is being changed. For ordinary, we use the uh, symbol like dy by dx. For ordinary, we will use del y by del x. But as I said, we don't worry about it now. It's beyond the scope of this unit, so we don't talk about it. So that's an ordinary equation of the first order. And then when we talk about the second order, we go over something like d2y by dx2. So what is that? Is d by dx or dy by dx. So you already have dy by dx. You are taking it one more step, one more differentiation of dy by dx. Okay. And when we say equation, it should have something like, uh, you know, um, x dy by dx plus two is equal to zero, something like that. that's a form of the equation, okay? Let's go over some of the example of ordinary differential equation. So this is more applied uh, topic, right? There'll be more application, we'll be referring to more um, advanced uh, physics application. So we know by Newton's second law that change in velocity with respect to time is the gravitational force, gravitational acceleration. Okay. So when an object is falling, it's changing its velocity. Any change is represented with the difference, uh, differentiation with respect to some variable. So whenever we are talking about uh, Newton's law, it's with respect to time. So when the velocity is changing with respect to time, that is the gravitational acceleration. So it's acceleration, but a uh, special uh, thing is for uh, G, which has a fixed value 9.8 meter per second squared yeah so in um it will travel uh 9.8 every every uh second yeah right so first order order indefinite of velocity with respect to time it becomes a second order why because what is v v is the velocity that is change in space or the displacement to be precise right uh dy by dt change in the position so once I replace it here, it's d by dt of dy by dt. That is also g. So in other words, it is d2y by dt square is g. Please observe how it is returned. d2y by dt square. Okay, follow the writing pattern. Don't mix it around. Don't write dy square by dt square. That will be wrong. Yeah d square y or d2y by dt square. This is how it is return. Okay. Right. So this is first order. As we can see, there's only one power of d differentiation, d by dt. Here we can see two power and that's why it's called second order ODE, ordinary differential equation of the distance y of t. You can only differentiate if it is a function of the variable. So v is a function of t, v is a function of t, right? Similarly, y should be a function of t. So you can also say v of t or y of t in other instance, okay? So object is falling down here and therefore it's changing its position every second, every time instance. Not necessarily second, every time unit. It could be second, minute, microsecond, yeah. Right, another example is the RL circuit. Yeah? Now, more of the applied part by Kirchhoff voltage law and Ohm's law, the voltage of this RL circuit. 
IR plus L di by dt is E, okay? And if you divide it by L, divide the whole equation by L, this becomes di by dt, R by Li and EL. Write it in a way it makes sense, you know? So how do you write an equation, linear or quadratic? We write AX square plus BX plus C. So what is the pattern we observe? The constant goes here, that's the variable. Constant goes here, that's the variable and the constant term, right? You could have written this in the similar pattern. So DI by DT, treat them as your variable plus R by L. So here your A is one, yeah, R by L I, right? And plus or in this instance minus E by L is zero. Right, so that's the resistance and goes how it goes like that. Yeah, so since we have only d by dt, it is called the first order differential, ordinary differential equation of i with respect to time. Right, next example is a spring mass system. So, by Hooke's law, Newton's second law m d2x by dt squared is minus kx, right? <clears throat> the spring is stretched, you know, with a one end fixed with the wall and mass m attached and it's moving horizontally, right? So changing that, again, you can write plus kx is zero or divide by m. Now, rather than k by m, you can always talk omega square x, but omega square, is k by m. You can always replace it by some another variable. It could be omega, could be omega square, but since we are talking about second order, it's the omega square. Right? When we solve the ordinary different equation, you will find that we keep varying the constant. Sometimes we will write plus c as an integration constant. Sometimes we will write c1, sometimes we will write c2. They're all fine, right? But again, we'll talk about it when it comes. Right. Now, classification of ODNA. So, since it's an introduction to OD, we'll be talking about various types of ordinary differential equation. So, this is linear, right? Linear is uh, no more fancy term other than just a dy by dx, right? So, by n, n in a bracket, right? It is the differentiation order, order of differentiation. a n minus 1, x, y n minus 1, a 1, x, y dash. So this is like the differential, first differentiation, then it comes the second, then it comes the third, n minus one and nth order linear differential equation. This is a fourth order linear differential equation, right? So in this instant, please observe, there is nothing up here, okay? It's one, right? So you start with a lesser. So if you're talking about the fourth, what goes a lesser is three. So your a3x as compared to this is zero. a2x, right? Anything that goes with the second order is a2, which is minus x square. Something that goes with the first differentiation is a1x. Um, something that goes with the y is two. And the right-hand side, which is sine 2x, is your bx. So remember this main equation and then you know, compare it with the given format. Now, when we talk about homogeneous equation, what happened? The right hand side becomes zero. Okay, that's the homogeneous equation. So everything else remains the same, but the right part, this bx is zero. Okay, so again, x triple y triple dash, so third order. You can also say d3y by dx3 or y3 in this form various ways of writing it, plus y dash minus 3y, okay? So since it's the third, you will start with a2, there is no y double dash term, or you, if for convenience, you can also write x, y triple dash, zero y double dash, one y dash minus 3y is zero. And now you compare with the original equation. So you can say your a2x is zero, next comes is your a1x, uh, you know, uh, we have to divide, first of all, before we start comparing, right? Because the first term has to be 1, as discussed. So what I will do 
is rewrite this y triple dash plus zero y double dash plus one on x y dash minus three on x y zero. Okay, and now we compare with the original stuff. So a2 is 0, a1 is 1 on x, and the last term, which is a0, is the multiple of y, so minus 3 on x. Since it's homogeneous, the right-hand side is 0, so we don't talk about px. px is already 0. Now, constant coefficient linear OD. So what do you observe here? That your a1, a2, they are all function of x, right? But if you keep it constant, then we don't write the x term. Right, something like this, which omega, if you observe here, where was that? Omega square was k over, it doesn't contain an x term. So that's a constant coefficient linear ordinary differential equation. So everything else remains the same, but the, the multiple, the coefficient are constant. They are not the functions of x, right? So again, going to the same spring mass thing, uh, F0 is a constant term. This is a spring mass system with a force force oscillation by the external force. So you stretch it, there is some force applied and it keeps moving, boom, 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 boom. Okay, and a subpart of it is, is homogeneous. Again, if you observe, that has some right-hand side px, this right-hand side is zero. So that's why it's called the homogeneous. There is no external force, that's why it's called free oscillation. Right, so let's talk about direct integration. The applicable to OD is in the form of yn, some nth order differentiation is some x or some y. There's no mixed term, only one absolute term that is either a function of x or a function of y. So y triple dash is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, right, what do we do here? Let's see. The y triple dash. See, y triple dash, there's a third integration. We will integrate it three times. So there'll be three constant. Remember the basic formula of integration. You cannot forget those. Like simple, x power and differentiate integration is x power n plus one over n plus one plus the integration constant c. Okay, so let's look at it step by step. Right, so first we integrate this with respect to x. So integration on both the side. So once we integrate, this has, uh, you know, integration. This is differentiation. They will go away. I mean, I shouldn't write it this way. That's not correct way. But what is triple dash? Um, triple dash is d by dx of the double dash, isn't it? So when I integrate it, so integration of triple dash, that means integration of d by dx of y double dash dx. So that's gone. So what is left is y double dash. As I said, it's not a correct way of writing, but you can understand it this way. So when you differentiate, the dash increases because dash represents the differentiation order. Um, when you integrate it, it reduces, right? So you integrate. What is integration of x squared? Integration of x squared is x3 over 3 plus c. But we don't write c at every state. We just write 1c or c1. As I said, what constant integration constant you write is entirely up to you, as long as there is some constant, right? Um, integration of 2x is x squared, 1 is x plus c1. We'll do two more integration because there is still double dash. So one more integration. X3 integration from this formula, integration of x rest to n is xn plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a constant. Okay. So we follow that formula. This will be reduced to from double dash reduced to 1 dash. Right. Um, x power 3 integration is 4 over 4, square integration is 3 over 3, x is x squared, c1 is c1x plus some constant c2. 
one more step because we still got y dash, so integration. And finally, y dash becomes y. x4 integration is x5 over 5, so it becomes 20. x4 over 4, so 12, 6. c1 x squared over 2, c2 x plus c3. You could have chosen a, b, c, but we keep the constant as c1, c2, c3. You could have gone for alpha, beta, gamma, any constant, but we stick to c1. We stick to a particular notation pattern c1, c2, c3. Uh, one quick note here, those who are watching the recording, please pause and try to solve it, right? Please pause the recording and try to solve it, right? Um, so y dash, which is treated as, uh, uh, you know, um, dy by dx, another example, if y dash is y3. See, this example, what we have seen, sorry, this one is of this type, is a function of x. Now we are going to see something that your different, um, differential equation term dy by dx or any particular order of differential equation is the form of y. So this is the example of form of y. Again, dy by dx is y3. What you observe, when we integrate, we keep the y term and dy on one side, we keep the x term and dx on the other side, right? So that was a y term. So what I did? is bringing it with the y dy, right, and dx, and now integration, right? This is treated as y power minus three, is integration is y minus two minus two plus c. It doesn't matter where you keep c, right? Just keep it on one side. So that will be minus half y minus two, integration of one is x plus c1. Multiplying it by minus two, shuffling up, so y squared is one over c minus two x. Now this negative two c1, is replaced by c. As I said, you keep one constant. Even if you keep negative two c1, it's fine, but it doesn't look that neat. So in order to make it more professional, more mathematical, we replace minus two c1 by another constant c. And that's fine. If you started with c, just write c1 over there, right? c minus two cx, remember to write plus or minus. Don't forget that. I've seen many students doing that mistake of living as it is. It has, has to have plus or minus when you take square root. Okay, so this is one type of uh, differential equation where you have either the x term or the y term. Right. So we did uh, this type of integration. Um, we go further, solve the ordinary of the free fold problem described in figure 1.1. So d2y by dt squared is g or dv by dt is g. Okay. Right. So dv by dt is g as we discussed or the second order differentiation. If it is this, you write one integration. If it is in terms of y, you will have two integration. Okay. And do the integration here. Right. Um, so what do we got? dv by dt is g. How do we integrate that? So first of all, you have to keep. See, there are two v and t. Both has d. You can't integrate like this. You have to shuffle it. It doesn't matter where is g. So we shuffle it. So we write dv is equal to g dt. What we do next? We do integration. So integration dv is integration g dt. You can keep g outside. So you can also write integration dv is equal to g integration dt. Integration of dv is v. This is gt plus some constant c1. If the question only asks this, that's it, end of story, v is equal to gt plus c1. But we know v is dv by dt, dy by dt, sorry. Is gt plus c1. What we do? It's called variable separable. We keep the variable on one side and t on the other side, right? So from here, what happens? Your dy 
exclude gt plus c1 dt. One more integration. d by integration is phi. g t square over 2 c1 t plus c2. That's it. In some instances, you will be given some extra particular values that when t is this, b is this. When t is this, y is this. Okay, so if you are given when t is say zero, y value is v value is that, then you'll it will help you to find c1 value, right? If you plug it back, so c1 is gone, and then another instance will be like, oh, when t is equal to say one, y is two, or whatever values, right? And then that will help you find another constant c2. If that's not given, we leave the solution as the general solution as y is equal to half gt square plus c1 t plus c2. This is t by the way, sorry. Okay. That's it. Okay, this is the solution of ODE for the free form. And this is uh, for some particular value of C2. How does it look? Yeah, over a period of time, you let your C2 as zero, looks like that, uh, as 100, 200 minus 100, you know, that's like a parabolic curve, yeah. Okay. See, the word is particular solution. So when it contains C1 and C2, that's the general solution. If no particular values are given, we leave it as it is. But if it is given like this, then we have to go a step further. Okay. So let's recall what we did in example 1.3. So your y was half gt square plus c1t plus c2. Okay. Or you can also say v is equal to gt plus c1 because we are given two condition. Simple, keep it simple. Two unknown, two equation. You are given two unknown, C1 and C2. You need two equation, right? One of them is Y of zero is zero. Another V of zero is zero, right? right. We use this, okay, from here. Um, when, uh, see, how to interpret this is very important, right? V is a function of T. So this is a value of T. And this is a value of V. Again, V of 0 is 0. This is the value of variable or uh, independent variable, I would call. Independent variable. That is T. And this is the value of V. So technically, what you are saying, V is 0 when the dependent independent variable T is 0. This is what you are saying. Yeah. So, 0 is equal to g times 0 plus c1, giving you c1 is 0, okay? And up here, it may be all 0, 0, because this is all 0, right? When you wanted to use this equation, 0, again, if y of 0 is 0, 0 square plus c1 times 0 plus c2, giving you c2 is equal to 0. When your c1, c2 both are 0, you write the equation... So that will give you y is equal to half gt square and v, what was it? v was gt plus c1, so v is equal to gt, that's it. This is the particular solution, general solution containing c1, c2, arbitrary constant, which we call it arbitrary for the sense of they could take any values, particular solution that's only valid for a particular value of the independent variable and the function itself. Okay. Right. Let's keep going. Explore some more examples. Find the particular solution for dy by dx is 10 y, y of 0 is equal to pi of 4. Before I explain this, I would urge anyone watching the recording, please pause the video here, try to solve it. Remember what we did comparing, keeping y with y and x with x. There is no x term, so we shuffle dx over there and then keep the 10y with y, okay? Right. 
So can I say, dy over 10y is dx, okay, so dy, what is 10y, sin y over cos y, is dx, we can also say cos y, sin y, dy is dx, recall all your integration technique, I'm sure you would have come across one concept which we call f dash x over fx dx is log or ln log e or ln fx plus c. Right? Or we can always assume it's some variable. All right so let's assume some variable let sine y is equal to v and therefore cos y dy is dv remember to substitute it back because this is a borrowed variable so in place of cos y dy i will write dv over v is equal to integration dx This will be ln v is equal to x plus c, right? As I said, remember to put it back. v or u, what did we assume v? Mm. Yeah, we assume v. Okay, that's fine. As long as we are putting it back, it doesn't matter. Um, what was v? v was sine y is equal to x plus c, okay? x plus c. Right, perfect. Now the, this is general solution. I mean, you can make it fancy if you want. You can take it like, you know, um, ln when changes the sign, it becomes exponential and sine y and all that thing to make y is equal to something. But we are going further. We are going for the particular solution. So we will do all the steps later. What we have? What we have is y of zero is pi over four. I'll write it. I'll explain the thing. Y of zero is pi over four. This is the value of the independent variable x, and this is the value of y. I'll write it when x is zero, y is pi on four. We put it back here. How does it look? ln sine pi on four is equal to zero plus c. What is the value of sine pi on four? One on root two, right? So ln one on root two is equal to c or ln um, two power minus half is c or you can even say minus half ln c or uh, leave it like that. Let's leave it like that and simplify if we need it to. Okay, so let me cancel the last bit. This is the value of my c. Okay, so I will replace it in this final solution. Okay. So, oops, ln sine y is equal to x plus ln 1 on root 2. I'll combine the ln term, ln sine y minus ln 1 on root 2 is x, right? Property of log, you can keep it divided. Ln is x, that becomes e power x. Is e power x. And uh, if you want only in terms of y, then you can say sine y is equal to one on root to e power x or finally, sine y is equal to root 2 on 2 e power x. That's it. You don't need to go any further that y is equal to arc sine of that. This is even the final answer. This is fine. Yeah. Anyone wants to go further? Like if you want to, 
arc sine of root two one two e power x. Okay, that's the y final y y is equal to f x kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Now. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. Like this is a practical um, stuff, uh, which you will always, you know, enjoy, or it will make more sense like when you're doing practical stuff, obviously. Right, so the compound interest. The compound interest is the addition. Oh, okay, so this is about compound interest. So what is compound interest? Like, as a basis, uh, compound interest and simple interest. Um, what is interest? When you deposit some money in a bank, bank gives you something extra on top of your deposit that is called interest. Extra amount that you incur on top of your deposit is called the interest, right? Whether it's a savings account, like a normal day-to-day -day account, then a higher savings account or a fixed deposit, term deposit, what we call it, um, or some other type of investment, right? Either you keep your interest separate or keep adding it to the principal account. If you keep adding it, what will happen? You got $100, let's say 10% is great. Let's talk about great stuff. Let's say you got 10% um, interest. Of course, it's calculated daily, but let's, for simplicity, let's say every year you get $10, right? So next year, either you can keep it aside withdraw it or you can keep adding to your actual account so next um, year you will have 110 in your bank account again 10 percent of 110 is 11 so your capital becomes 121 again keep on adding it you got 12.1 so that's 133.1 so it keeps growing keeps growing that is compound interest right simple interest every year you get ten dollar you have some money you take it out like a pensioner right many of the pensioners what they do they got some pension money, um, superannuation money or superannuation fund or something, some deposit, some investment. They use it for the day-to-day -day living. So that's a, they got 500K, you know, 5, 10%, 10% very good investment, return on investment. They got 50,000. They will use it for day-to-day -day expense to take care of your rent or mortgage if they have any or food, grocery going around, you know, entertainment, trip, all that part. So their principle stays the same. It's a simple interest, right? Cool. Um, okay. So for a long-term account, without withdrawing any money from it, it becomes a special case called the continuous compounding. As I explained, the compound interest of an account is a continuous compounding that can be determined by DP, by DT is equal to RP. Where P is the amount, the original amount, is changes with respect to time. So DP by DT is equal to RP. There is some rate which is and that's multiplied with the uh, the principal amount, like ten percent or something, right? Like I said, okay. How much will be in the account after three years if two thousand was deposited initially with a fixed interest of five percent? So you got the rate R, you got the P, and you got the value T. So you know all the unknowns. So here we are talking about a particular solution. So we'll obtain the general solution to start with and in that general solution in order to remove that c1 c2 only c1 because there's only one dp by dt first order um we'll have c1 or whatever constant we'll plug in all the value of r that is 5 t that is 3 and p that is 2000 once we have a nice particular solution then when will the account accumulate to 10000 so when is the time frame? Okay, when is the time frame? You will find T when P becomes 10,000. So let's look at it step by step. Let's first of all solve it. So we got uh, first part. Oops. EP by DT is equal to RP. RP. As we know it, we keep P on the one side, T on the other side. So DP over P is equal to RDT, right? 
Okay, and then we integrate it. You give the R outside, doesn't matter. So this is ln P is equal to RT plus some constant C1. Okay, now um, we keep it like this because we wanted to obtain the particular solution. Or if you want, you can say P is equal to E power RT plus C1. You separate it. E power RT, E power C1. E power C1 is another constant. Let's call it C. Okay, so that's your general solution. All right. Now, when plug in the values that is given to us, we are given the value of P, 1000, 2000, sorry, T, um, the other stuff. Um, okay. Right. But when we say P is equal to 2000, what is that? So initial. So how do you denote the initial time? So we'll start like this. When time is zero, the principal P is $2,000. Okay, we plug that in. I'll call it equation one. So 2000 is equal to C, E power zero times R. E power zero, that is one. So C will be $2,000. So my equation one will be P is equal to 2000 E raised to RT. My C is gone, which is great. Okay. Now I use the other parameter. I got fixed 5%. So that is 0 0.05 because we can't express it in terms of percentage. We have to write it a real number, which is 0 0.05. So my P will be 2000 e raised to 0 0.05 t that is my p okay that's my particular solution now i need to find out how much will it be um, you know after three years so what i will have to do just plug in uh, you know three in place of t, right? So p will be, okay, let me do it on the next page. Next slide, I mean, I've got two more slides, so I'll use, okay. First point. Uh, when t is three after three years, right? If you look at the question, it will say after three years. Okay, so I plug it in here. P is equal to two thousand e raised to zero point zero five times three. Two thousand e raised to zero point one five, and that calculation. So I'll do it here. Exponential of zero point one five. You times that by two thousand. So that gives me two three two three point six seven. So the principal amount at the fixed of five percent is this much. Now quickly, if you um, look at the simple interest, that is keeping the interest outside. So 5%, first year is 100, second year 100, third year 100. So you will have 300. But up here, we got 323.67, a bit higher, because you are again accumulating interest on your interest. So that's the first part, okay? Right, now we do the second bit. What was the second part? When so we will find the time where p becomes ten thousand after how many years? Where is that applicable? Uh, you got a fixed aim to achieve some money. Say for example, you are a parent, right? Um, if you are a parent, you have some aim, or let's say you don't worry about being parents or anything. You have an aim that when you retire, when you become in the age of sixty, let's say you are thirty or twenty five right now. By the time you retire, your retirement age, you have assumed as 60 years. So let's say you are 25, you retired at 60. How many years? You got 35 years. You know, I mean, you consider all the inflation aspect and everything. So whatever thing is available, 
remove 5%. When 5% is a very nominal number, I would say remove 10%. Looking at the current inflation number, even the stat says it's four, four and a half, it's not realistic. We know the price, it doesn't go four, four and a half, you know, like rental, for example, grocery prices, all that. I'm not going in there, but just give me a number. So you pick up an inflation number that you are comfortable with, remove that number, and then see, I wanted to achieve one million or two million. I got $10,000. So how many years or what investment strategy? Let's say your years is fixed 35 years before you retire. You have a starting amount, that's your P. You have a final amount. In our instance, the final amount is 10,000. You have a final amount that is one and a half million, two million, right? What should be your strategy? How much person interest should you receive? So, sorry, should you receive in order to achieve that number? Or you have an investment strategy. Someone says, oh, I'll give you 10%. So how much your 10, 20,000 will be in 35 years time frame? So you can fix some variable and vary only one of them. Either you vary the time frame that, oh, this is not enough. So I can't retire at 60. I'll go up to 65 or 70, right? Or you say, oh, inflation is too high. I should choose some strategy which give me higher return, you know? So you can keep varying one or the other variable and use this one now. You know, to ensure that you have enough money when you retire. Again, we are not an investment expert. We should consult, but these are the way you should think into your future planning. Okay, using this mathematical uh, differential equation. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's go back to the question. So now, what was our stuff? We got P. I'll have to recall. Yes, I got it here. Two thousand E is two. 0.05 t. I need to find the time frame. There are two variables, p and t. I need to find the time frame. How many years when my p will be 10,000, right? Okay, so 10,000 is equal to 2,000 e raised to 0 0.05 t. When you suffer that 5 is equal to e raised to 0 0.05 t, exponential goes on the other side becomes ln, ln, Five is 0 0.05 t. When you solve it, ln 5 divided by this, your t um, is almost 32.2 years. So we round it off. We say in 33 years, your $2,000 will become 10,000. So five times of your money at 5%. Right now, where do you achieve 5%? Many of the higher savings account give you 5%. But if you look at the inflation number, let me Google it now. Inflation rate Australia. Our goal, official interest rate. I don't know where is this coming from. It says Forbes. Um, May 23 says grocery price of 10%. So official inflation rate is 7%. I don't know how old is this article, right? So whatever in interest you are getting, let's say you have some investment option where you are getting 5% return. That means you are losing your money by 2% <laughs> because 7% is the price hike, right? So you should go for some investment strategy where you are getting 10 or 15% land stocks, some in other investment strength, businesses, right? Um, because 7% is what your prices will be. So let's say you have something, some stuff you're getting for $100, next year it will be 107. So if your money is compounded 100 to 105, you're losing $2, right? So even the 5% sums look ready from many of the bank, or oh, young achiever, young saver, 5%, 4.8, 4.85, you see many ads like this, but it's not enough. To keep up with inflation right then your net you're losing so let's say you are going for 10 percent return on your investment then your net gain is only three percent and seven percent on paper just look at the past few years is definitely not seven percent i mean they have proof statistic says it's there but just go to woolies and compare a couple of years prices versus now laundry liquid and milk and cheese and all that you will definitely find this lot more your day-to-day -day stuff. Some of the things may stay same, blah, 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 right? 
okay electric vehicle may go down and that's why the whole number is that's five six seven percent but not everything concerns you if the electric vehicle price goes down you're not going to buy electric car right now right so your inflation rate could be a bit different than what rba says yeah but again we are not going that i'm just touching base how you can use mathematics for your future planning. Let me know if you did that. I can help you, right? Again, I'm not an expert financial advisor or anything, but at least give you some tips on what you should think, okay? How you should plan your things. Right, going back here. Okay, we got a couple more examples to do. Right, uh, next one. 6x squared minus 5x minus 2y is equal to 0. 2y dash is equal to 0, sorry. How do you deal with it? So we need dy by dx. So first of all, we keep it here. So 6x squared minus 5x is 2y dash. I will call it y dash is equal to 3x squared minus 5 over 2x. Okay. Now y dash is dy by dx. Is equal to 3x squared minus 5 on 2x. Right? What this means, we keep the y term on the one side and x on the other side and integrate. So, so integration dy is equal to integration 3x squared minus 5 on 2x dx. This is y is equal to x3 5 on 4x squared plus some constant c. We don't have any special condition. So that's it. Right? F3 minus 5 on 4x squared plus C. That's it. That's the general solution, not the particular solution, because we don't have any special condition of the variables, right? Right. We got one more example. Again, those watching the recording, please pause it here and try to solve it. Right, same approach. Uh, we keep y dash is equal to 2x square root of x square minus 4 plus 6x. y dash is dy by dx. 2x x square minus 4, 6x and dy is equal to integration 2x x squared minus 4 dx. I mean, I prefer it separated, 6x dx. Right, you got some square root term and everything. Okay, what we will do here, this is 4, yeah. I will assume this has some t or u or v, whatever you like, okay. And I'll play a bit here before I perform the final integration, right? Okay, so what we do? Uh, let me do it here. Okay, so what we do here, let, what was that? X square minus four, ST, and therefore two X DX is DT, right? Do I have two X there? Yes, oops, I skipped one screen, sorry. I'll go back to the previous screen. Okay, I'll leave that. Okay, again, x squared minus four is t, two x dx is dt. Right, so if I look back to this, I got my dy is equal to integration two x, x squared minus 4dx plus 6x dx. So this is my t. I'll write everything. So square root of t and this 2x along with dx becomes dt. Okay. Plus square root of 6x dx. This is t power half. Integration will be t power 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 plus this is 3x squared plus some constant c. We put back our t, okay? And write it a bit nicely. So two-third 
x square minus 4 power 3 over 2 sorry i forgot to integrate this as well so this is y y y plus 3x square plus c okay and that's it there is no special condition given in a question it doesn't specify any x and y values so it's no special condition given and therefore we keep the final answer as this only nothing more to add that's it this is the um final answer had had it been given like x is equal to y of zero is this this this, this we plug it in and try to solve it from there right uh so this is it for today um any question any question, please get in touch with me, uh, you know, if you have any, uh, stop share. If you've got any doubt, um, got any question, please get in touch with me. Happy to help, right? Thank you very much and hope to see you in the next, uh, next week. Thank you, bye.